today I want to talk about five gardening mistakes that I make over and over again. And every year I probably get a little bit better at them, but nevertheless, I find that they just keep rising to the surface every growing season. So I thought I would go through them and you guys might be thinking about your own yards and your own gardens as I do so, so you can see if you can relate to some of these. Um, but here is my question for today. So tomorrow I'm having a wedding shower for my daughter-in-law to be. They're getting married at the end of July. Finally, I couldn't be more excited. And as one of their wedding gifts, I want to give them something garden related. Now they have a loft apartment in downtown Denver. They do indoor gardening, but not outdoor gardening. So I would like some gift ideas from you guys. I I really want it to be something substantial because I think they will own a home before long. So if you have, have given a garden gift as a wedding present in the past, I would like to know what things were especially well received. So if you would put that in comments below, uh, you guys always make the best suggestions. Okay, so here's my number one thing I do over and over again. And this weekend, I'm gonna concentrate on this. And that is, I think more about myself and how things look and the appearance of the garden than I do about the plant itself. And here's what I mean by that. I want this wavy jade plant to be in this location because I like the way it looks as part of this tableau. But is this plant happy here? No, it's not. I had it here yesterday and I noticed that it was getting way too much sun. So despite the fact that I want it to be here because I like the way it looks in this composition, the plant doesn't like it. So in this case, I need to put my, um, my sensibilities about design aside and I need to take into account what the plant wants, not what I want. I've done this in several locations in my garden. I do it over and over again every year, but this year I'm going to try to be a little bit more attentive to it. If I want the look and whatever, um, whatever this is contributing to this tableau, then I need to find something else and move this guy where it's happier. So that is my number one gardening mistake is I think more about design sometimes than I do about the needs of the plant. Well, in terms of my second gardening mistake, I irritate myself so much because I do this over and over again. And I, I don't know if it's because I'm mentally lazy or because I just fail to record it. I'm not sure what it is. But again, it's another design mistake that I make and I am intent on finally starting to pay more attention to it. So what is it? I don't pay enough attention to specific cultivars of things so that I can replicate the look or tell you guys what a specific variety is. It probably frustrates you no end and it would frustrate me and I'm going to get better about it. And this is a perfect example. So yes, I know that this is a beautiful orange rocket barberry. I've, I've showed it many times before. For. But I don't know specifically which Asiatic lily this is, but the color harmony is absolutely beautiful. And I would like to plant probably some more of these in the area and in another place where I've got orange rocket barberry growing. But I'm not sure exactly what variety this lily is. Why? Because I didn't pay attention. I didn't, um, I, I wasn't really intentional about remembering the name and I didn't record it and if I recorded it I don't remember where. <laughs> so all of that uh, probably is just an indication of number one that I'm getting old but number two that I need to be much more intentional and I promise you I resolve that I will definitely start paying more attention to specific cultivars and varieties so I will remember for myself and I will remember for you guys because I'm sure it's very frustrating but that said isn't that a beautiful combination and I'll put, a, I'll put a link below to Orange Rocket Barberry. You guys know how much I love it. It's a Southern living plant. Ignoring the obvious. I'm really bad about this. So I, will ha I always have projects in the works that haven't come to 
completion yet. And, and eventually I do get them. But in the meantime, I tend to just have piles of stuff like this right here. It's right outside the studio door. I see it every time I go in and out. And quite frankly, it makes me a little bit stressed every time I go in and out because I haven't had time yet to complete these projects. Now, it reminds me of a scene in the movie The Intern with Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway. And there was this one spot that she would pass daily that was just a table that had a bunch of messy stuff on it. And Robert De Niro, ultimately as the intern, cleared it off. And when she came back through and realized it was gone, she also had an epiphany about just how much it had bothered her. And she felt so much lighter and so much less stressed when that little pile of stuff was gone. And so my next, uh, so that would be my third gardening mistake. And the next one that I resolved this weekend to take care of, I need to put all of my little projects in one area very neatly instead of scattered all around the garden uh, where I will eventually tackle them without creating additional pressure and stress for myself by just seeing piles of stuff around that then, by the way, do things like hold water, that then holds mosquitoes, and all sorts of other kind of secondary issues. So that is my third gardening mistake that I make over and over again is I ignore the obvious piles of clutter and projects that I have scattered throughout the garden that need to find a home. That was my number three big mistake. So my number four mistake that I make over and over again is I don't prioritize a lot of my garden tasks. And it's especially important, I think, when you have a lot to do in the garden and you've got a limited amount of time to do it and I don't prioritize well. So of course I do what is just, uh, I guess it's just natural, and I tackle those things that I like to do versus those things that I should do. So for example, you guys know I love to prune things, I love to clip things, I like to uh, design and compose things. And so I tend to concentrate on that. So like getting this beautiful boxwood globe, that is something that, that I find pleasurable to do. Not so much. Um, I don't like planting a whole lot, even though I need to do it. I definitely do not like spraying for any kind of bugs, uh, fungicides, applying any insecticides or fungicides, even if they're organic. I don't like to do it. I always have to watch the weather when I do it. It's just not pleasant to me. So sometimes I will note that it needs to be done. I will note that there's the first appearance of spider mite or white fly or things of that nature, but I don't always get around to actually executing on what I need to do, which is to address those pest problems or those fungal problems. Now, what can you do? Well, number one, I can create more what I call negative space and lessen the congestion around problem areas that tend to be prone towards uh, to a congestion of some kind of pest like spider mite or white fly uh, and, and fungal problems. They basically need more air circulation and so I can improve the air circulation around them. Typically, you guys have asked me what my go-to uh, insecticides are. I use a lot of spray neem oil. I use that Captain, uh, Captain Jack's uh, bonide dust that is oh, always, if you need to find any of these links, they're in the description below, and you can go directly to those links. So I use a lot of that dust. Uh, this time of year, as budworms start making an appearance, I will use bacterial thuringiensis. 
in either a dust or a spray form. One of you commented that the dust can be kind of messy, so you might want to use the BT spray. And what it does is it helps you mitigate the problems of budworms that chew through buds, not so much on this begonia, but definitely on my salvia forensia, on my geraniums, and on other plants. So those links will also be below. So at a minimum, and then just general insecticidal soap. So those things at a minimum, I always have in my arsenal for treating pests and fungal issues, even though I may not always do them in a timely way. So that would be my fourth gardening mistake that I'm going to try to rectify, and that's better prioritization of my garden tasks so that by procrastinating, I don't create or by not procrastinating, I don't create future problems for myself. This isn't necessarily a tip, but it's an observation. If you sometimes feel like I do, that your garden is just too cluttered. And I think part of that is because we have too many different kinds of materials that we use. And so our eye just has a hard time creating unity and harmony in the garden. So what I'm trying to do more of is create more visual precedence. And what do I mean by that? So definitely I've got lots of terracotta in my garden and I'm going to try to restrict what types of planters and pots that I use a little bit more so things don't look quite so discordant. So obviously I really need to tackle this um, what I call my boxwood theater. I usually have done this a long time ago way early in the growing season and this year I just haven't gotten around to it. I've still got some baby gem uh, boxwoods from Southern Living that I want to start clipping into balls. I need to shape these. I need to pot them and I really just need to clean this area up. So think about that. Think about how much visual precedent you have in your gardens and try to elaborate on that. So in this case, I've got all terracotta, which makes them look really uh, unified and very much as a thematic. It's one of the things that I like about creating these theaters, but it also uh, creates a visual precedent with the terracotta that's then replicated, Stuart, if you can show the porch, it's then replicated in other areas of my garden. Another thing that I think creates a visual precedent, I, I did it and now I'm not going to do it anymore. And that is related to gravel because I love gravel so much. I love it kind of in all of its forms. I love my regular pea gravel that I get from Lowe's. I love uh, dark black, really fine gravel. I like white gravel. What I have found that creates, again, that kind of visual disharmony is I don't like mixing them in my garden. So I have found that when I top my plants off with gravel, I want them all to be the same color. I not too long ago I had some pots together and I had some that had one color of gravel on them and another that had another color of gravel. And while I might like that pot individually with that color of gravel, when I aggregated them all together, I didn't like the way the overall look appeared. So if you're using gravel to top your plants and you've got them all in one area, you might consider topping all of them with the same type of gravel and another type of gravel you might relegate to another area or reserve it for indoor use or something else. This is, um, this is a design thing that I just noticed myself and I had to kind of dissect it to figure out what was wrong and why that look didn't appeal to me. And it was because I had too many different colors of gravel in one spot. So there you go, it's visual precedent and try to really elaborate and enhance that concept. 
well, this is another one of those, it's related to, I guess, my two other mistakes, but as a broad category, I'm going to just call it uh, my bad about composting in general. So I really need to be better about my composting. And I, I will, I guess kind of go back to my prioritizing kind of thing. I tend to do those things in the garden that are most fun to me and provide me with the most immediate gratification. I have been meaning to tackle this area for a long time. I have in my compost tumbler, which I love, I have a beautiful batch of compost that I fully intend to mix with a lot of these dried leaves that have been sitting here forever that I'm going to shred in my works leaf shredder. And I will put a link below and probably do a story on Instagram when I do it because I can create some really, really wonderful composted mulch with both my homemade compost and these leaves. So I've been meaning to do that forever and also tidy up this whole area over here that's really it's really another one of those cluttered zones that's bothering me. And at a certain point, I can't use that I'm so busy as an excuse because that really wouldn't take much time at all for me to tidy that up. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna quit using that as an excuse. The other thing, the other big part of that is that I've got this compost holding bin here and I have never really utilized it effectively. Last year you saw how I had it planted in the front. Um, I had all sorts of succulents and things that were coming out of the front. It was very pretty. It was, it was very attractive as far as compost, compost bins go. Most of those things died over our hard winter. But I just have this big holding bin of stuff that is not being composted because I haven't gotten it out of my compost tumbler so then I could take some of this material and put it in there. Now, in my defense, it's not easy to get stuff out of here because when my sweet husband had this made for me a number of years ago, he didn't think about its accessibility. So there is really no way I can't just fold down one of these panels to access the composting materials in there. I have to literally go from the ground or from the top down and that is not handy. So I keep telling myself, I'm gonna get somebody out here, a handyman or whatever, because my husband has many qualities, but he is not handy, um, to kind of fix this so that it's definitely easier to access and easier to ultimately turn into compost. I'm sure the stuff at the bottom is absolutely beautiful because it's been there forever, but can I get to it? No. So this has been one of those things that has been bothering me for a long time. I get a big demerit, no gold star here. I get a big demerit for not taking care of this and the rest of this area. So hopefully next time I talk to you and I do a walkabout, I'll get a big shiny gold star because I will finally have tackled this composting area. So those are my five bads, my five mistakes that I keep doing over and over again that I really am going to try to challenge myself on this week, this coming week. Heat is not necessarily an excuse. So there you go. Those are my five mistakes. Please put in the comments below if you can relate to any of them. Well, here is my ensemble for today. Most of it compliments of my mother-in-law. The dress is actually just an inexpensive one I've had for years. It came from Forever 21. My samples are the same ones that I got at Target the other day. I'll put a link below. By the way, you guys, I love these sandals and I find that I wear them almost daily now. So they've been a great investment for the summer. They were just $19. Uh, my earrings I had on the other day as well. These are Lucky earrings. 
that came from TJ Maxx. But what makes the ensemble is this beautiful fetish necklace. It's hand carved by Zuni Indians. These were very, very popular in the 70s and the 80s. It's a very Southwest kind of thing for my part of the country. I'll put a little bit more information on fetish necklaces in the link below, but this one belonged to my mother-in-law, so it's really precious to me. And no, they can be valuable, so I will not be working out in the yard in this. So there's my fashion ensemble for today.